I think we're already at 20. This is so beautiful it's this morning and we've only been on the road for 20 minutes. This place is just ridiculously, jaw-droppingly gorgeous. How does this get any better? This weekend we're going on a little Colorado road trip from Durango up to the town of Ure. And while this is only a 70 mile drive and takes about an hour and 45 minutes without stops, we're gonna take our sweet time and see a bunch of sights along the way. And for our first leg of the trip, we are going to drive the 48 mile stretch of Highway 550 known as the San Juan Scenic Byway to Silverton, Colorado. Our first stop is Honeyville, which is a third generation beekeeping and honey bottling business. It all started back in 1918 when Vernon Colane removed some bees from a tree on his property and he started his own hive. He soon noticed that these bees made the best honey he had ever tasted and he wanted to share this. So word got out that he had amazing honey and he became known as the Falfa Honey Man and he used to load up his truck and head down to the train station in Durango and people would fill up big containers of honey from the back of his truck. Honeyville was way cooler than we thought it would be. When you first walk in, you see these massive windows where you can see their distillery with all this really beautiful copper equipment and machinery, and also this other area, which is the production area. And they weren't currently working, but you could see basically where they would put all of the honey products together. So one of the coolest things on the inside, which is just on the other side of this wall, is this double-sided honeycomb, bee comb. I don't know the correct term, <laughs> but there's tons of bees in there that you can see working, making honeycomb and making honey probably but you can also see this tube on the inside that bees flying in and out of and they actually come out of this pipe here and just above my head there's bees flying all around me. So they come out here and do whatever bees need to do, pollinate the flowers, yada yada, and then they can come back in and then they get right back to work on the honey. They have basically any honey related product you could think of for sale in there. They have jams, they have just big things of raw honey, they have sauces, they have hot honey, they have a million different flavors of whipped honey and they even let us try a few samples of some of the products. I'm trying hot honey. Oh, oh wow. Oh, yeah, no, you taste the pepper. That's good. We could have spent a ton of money in there, so we had to try to have a little bit of self-control, but we chose as our one item, the cinnamon whipped honey, which we hear is kind of the customer favorite. So we figured that would be a good one to start with. And we have some big plans for this bad boy tomorrow. Right across the street from Honeyville is James Ranch, which is a regenerative farm, which basically means they utilize farming and ranching techniques that are better for the environment. They do this by rebuilding the soil, improving the water cycle, and sequestering carbon in the soil. And that's your science lesson for the day. I can smell the burgers on the grill. They smell so good. So James Ranch is not only a working ranch, but it also has a market and a grill, and they don't consider themselves farm to table, but rather table on the farm. And they source all their ingredients from the farm itself or from local vendors around the area. It smells so freaking good. Mm. Mm. I am so excited for this. It smells so dang good. I know I've said it eight times, but <laughs> I just can't get over it. I'm so excited. So I got the green chili pico burger, which is on a delicious looking bun, grass fed beef, which they eat the grass that's right behind me over here. You can see I'm munching right now. <laughs> Slice of avocado, lime crema, and then green chili pico here, which green chilies are a big Colorado thing. And then they have Belford cheese. And I didn't know what that was. So I asked the girl up there what that was. She says it's kind of like a cheddar and it's made in that building over there. 
Mine's not as exciting looking as Adam's, but it still looks dang good. I just got their, I think it's called the basic not boring burger. And it's just a burger patty, pickles, they have onion and tomato. And then I got this like stone ground mustard, but I forgot to ask for cheese and I'm so sad now. And we also got, we each got our own small fingerling french fries because if we were to split one, like large one, I would probably end up eating more than Adam and he'd be really sad. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, you have to start with the star of the show, the patty. It is just so tender, juicy, so much meaty flavor, like more meaty than a normal burger you would get anywhere else because it's so high quality. It just tastes so much better. And then all the other ingredients you have on here, the pico gives you like that freshness bite. The cheese is super delicious. Avocado gives it cream. And then also the lime crema, you can taste a bit of the little tartness of the lime just mixes so well with the pico and the creaminess of the cheese and then the bun is just amazing too i think i read that they make the buns locally with eggs that are pasture raised here on the farm adam basically described the burger perfectly but this just has such good grill flavor just it just tastes amazing it's so juicy so good oh yeah mm. These are interesting. I've never had fries really like this. You can tell they're definitely like hand cut because they're all different looking. Is this rosemary? It I tastes think it's kind a rosemary of, garlic. It tastes house. like, yeah, the sauce. sauce is like a rosemary garlic sauce and it is good. And these fries are perfectly just potato-y. They're just fluffy potatoes on the inside. Mm. These fries, they're nice and pillowy, my word, on the inside, but on the outside, they also have that nice crunchy crispy. Perfect. One thing to note is that the food is a little bit on the pricey side. I think for two burgers, two fries, and a lemonade, we paid 30 something dollars, 40 something with tip, but you're paying for all the labor and the process that goes into making these higher quality ingredients. Not only is the food outstanding, but they have a really cool seating area with picnic tables all spread out and you have the gorgeous views of the property all surrounding you. And they have a self-guided tour that you can go on to learn more about the property. This is the dairy barn and it's actually a New Zealand style open air dairy barn. And this is supposedly helps it uh, keep everything clean and dry. And with this one machine, they can milk six cows at one time. What? Yeah, so while the mother cows are being uh, milked here, the calves are waiting over here and that calms the mother cows. And it also tells the calves that this is a safe thing for them to do. So they're not freaking out when it's their turn way down the line. So after the milk is cooled in their vat over there, it travels through this stainless steel pipe over to the building where they make the cheese. Never leaves here, so cool. And now for the best part of the tour, the two seven week old goats named Ghost and Buster. Hi guys, how are you? Next up on our road trip, we are at the Pinkerton Hot Springs, which is just right off the highway if you can't hear all the cars <laughs> going by. But it was discovered by explorer James Pinkerton in the 1800s and it quickly turned into a tourist attraction and a resort. And it's even said that Marilyn Monroe visited here and soaked in these healing waters. <laughs> So unfortunately, as you can tell, the resort has burned down three times actually. <laughs> and back in 2001, the Colorado Department of Transportation installed a vertical pipe to basically direct and kind of reroute the flow of the water and to protect the vegetation all around. And now we have this 
mound of just mineral rich rock that's just building on each other forever and ever. It's crazy, it looks <laughs> man made. <laughs> It's not hot. It's not? No. It's not hot. <laughs> it's a room temperature spring. What the heck? I've now felt the hot spring in various locations and it's not hot at all, but it's still really, really cool looking. Check out this sick camp spot we grabbed. Probably the best one we've ever gotten with all these views all around us. This one's called Lime Creek Road Camp. Super easy to get to just off the road. Go down the dirt road maybe a minute and then just find yourself a spot. But the best part is it is free. So we're gonna hang out here for the night and then continue our trek to Silverton tomorrow. I think we're already at 20. This is so beautiful this morning and we've only been on the road for 20 minutes. This place is just ridiculously, jaw-droppingly gorgeous. <laughs> Today is the day. We're taking our new kayak on its maiden voyage, its inaugural paddle. This is our first time kayaking since our Texas coast kayaking popping debacle. And we're at a spot called Molas Lake. And so far it's already looking way more promising. The water looks deeper and there are no oyster reefs here. <laughs> Feels good to be back. <laughs> We're not dragging. <laughs> We're actually floating this time, unlike last time. Woo, off to a good start. <laughs> How does this get any better? Beautiful little lake, 
mountains all surround you, sun's out, it's like 60 degrees probably, the fresh mountain air. Somebody's got a campfire going on over here. Every best smell, best view, best temperature. What's nice about this lake versus some others that we've kayaked at is that it's not that big and there's no destination you need to get to to see like the best view. There are just views all around you. So we're kind of just gonna go around in circles and just kind of relax and just float. And it's nice to not feel like we have to rush in the kayak to a certain spot. Survived. <laughs> we didn't have to get rescued this time. We had an amazing time at Molos Lake, but we are back on the road now and we're just now pulling into the town of Silverton, which we'll be exploring tomorrow. But our goal for the rest of the day is to find a campsite, hopefully with the campfire ring, hopefully with some amazing views. We have a few that we can pick from, so we'll see what we can find. We found an amazing free campsite and it's actually not one of the three or four that we had written down. There's this general area right outside of Silverton where there are tons of free dispersed campsites, but we kept driving down that road further to try to escape the crowds and we found this spot called Golden Horn and it is so beautiful. We have mountain views all around, the river's right over there, there's not that many people here at all and we have the fire ring we wanted. We are so dang happy. Next up on the agenda, we're gonna cook up the items that we bought from James Ranch and Honeyville yesterday. Check out my leaning tower of burger. <laughs> so we did our best attempt at recreating the James Ranch burger we did yesterday. So we bought some Wagyu ground beef and then we also bought their Belford, I think it's the reserve one. I think it's like the, the kind of everyday cheese. Oh. Just as good as yesterday? Just about as good. The item we are 
are most excited to try is the cinnamon whipped wildflower honey that we got from Honeyville yesterday. We tried their choke cherry flavor of this, which was really good. It's a mix of grape, cherry, and huckleberry, I think, flavors. It was really, really interesting. But we hear this is like the classic go-to one, and it's gonna go very well with what we're cooking up right now. Oh, 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 this is, it looks kind of like a caramel, but it's honey. And the founder of Honeyville created his own device to whip this honey to get it like it is. Oh my God. It's supposed to be dripless. It's, well, it's dripping a little. Well, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, so, but like honey is like very drippy. This is Oh my gosh. Incredible. We figure we need to taste test it first before we put it in what we're making to make sure it's not poisonous. Oh wow. Oh my gosh. It tastes exactly like you would expect cinnamon honey but the texture of it is what makes it so so much better in my opinion mm. oh wow that's sweet <laughs> yeah this is a super unique texture very yeah very creamy and i don't know thick yeah very thick that's gonna go so well with what we're making oh my gosh that's so good very sweet but like the perfect amount of cinnamon in there wow so we are making a hobo pie which if you've watched our other videos we've made these two times we've made a s'mores kind of like an elvis s'mores one we made a bear claw one or a bear claw knockoff which is a delicious treat at glacier national park and we're going to be doing kind of like an apple pie hobo pie we've been cooking down some apples and some butter and then we're going to put the honeyville cinnamon honey all over it put it in between two slices of bread put it in this contraption over the fire and it's like a little handheld apple pie. Not as like apple pie as we had hoped. I think they're still gonna be really good. So compared to some of the other hobo pies we've made, it's not very gooey, but that might be a good thing because those ones were super messy. Still has that nice buttery crisp outside and I think it'll still be good. Mmm, that was actually better than I thought it would be. It's still sweet. It's kind of, the apples aren't like the soft, they're not super, super soft. They have a nice little bit of a crisp to them still, which is really good, I like that. It really does taste just like an apple pie though. I scarfed my hobo pie down and we have a little bit of apple left and a lot of honey left, so I think I might just make myself another one. <laughs> <laughs> but we still have about 25 miles left until our final destination of Ure, and tomorrow we're gonna continue our drive up the famous, and some would say treacherous, million dollar highway. better be careful, huh? I know, you better watch out, Adam. <laughs> this is Mr. Steal Your Girl. <laughs> the one they told you not to worry about. The one they said don't worry about. 